I hope I was able to help you decide whether to apply for Japanese naturalization or how to prepare for one in the near future. Hello everyone! My name is Cam, your host from Swimmy Channel. I think after finding a stable job and having lived in Japan for some time, one would begin to think about the possibility of living here indefinitely. There are two ways for foreigners to be able to do this. One is by acquiring permanent residency, and another is by naturalization or gaining Japanese citizenship. Permanent residency is defined as having the authorization to stay in Japan on a permanent basis. This status of residency provides more advantages than other statuses of residence, as it does not limit the status holder's activities or period of stay. To find out more about how to qualify or apply for permanent residency, please refer to our previous video. Naturalization simply means that a foreign national acquires Japanese citizenship with the permission granted by the Minister of Justice. If you are currently thinking about applying in the near future or still deciding whether to apply for a permanent resident visa or naturalization, I have made a simple chart for comparison that might help you. It is possible to apply for both at the same time, as long as the application requirements are met. Naturalization in Japan consists of three types, namely, Ordinary naturalization for the general working visa holders, which include non-married foreigners and also those who are married to another foreigner. The second is the simplified naturalization for those who are married to Japanese nationals, Koreans in Japan, and special permanent residents. And third, great naturalization for those with a proven track record in sports, science, and such. In today's video, I will be discussing about the Ordinary Naturalization application, explaining to you in depth about each of the conditions, documents required, the processing time, approval rate, and more, so please watch until the end. In order to acquire Japanese nationality, there are a number of strict conditions that must be met. Each condition is described in the nationality law. These basic conditions for the application of ordinary naturalization are the following. The first condition is you have been domiciled in Japan for five consecutive years or more. The residence requirement, to put it simply, is that you must be living in Japan for at least five years continuously and have not been out of the country for more than three months or longer at one time or 200 days in one year for any other reason, whether this is for an overseas business trip, going to your home country to give birth, or others. In addition, it is necessary to have been working either as a full-time, contractual, or dispatched employee on a working visa for at least three years. It is not necessary to have gained the three or five year period of stay, as in the case of a permanent resident visa application. Therefore, it is fine even if you have renewed your working visa every year. If you have spent the first two years in Japan as a student and are currently working for three years, totaling to five years of stay, you may qualify for this condition. If you have a spouse of a Japanese national visa status, you can apply for naturalization after three years of marriage and at least one year of residency in Japan, while permanent residence visa holders are exempted from the three-year working visa requirement. The second condition is that you must not be less than 20 years old and you must be of legal capacity under the laws of his home country. This condition requires the applicant to be at least 20 years old and have reached the age of adulthood in their current nationality. Age requirements are relaxed for naturalization applications for children applying at the same time as their parents. The third condition is that you must be of good and lawful conduct. Simply put, you should have a good, clean record and must have never been involved in a crime. You must also be diligent in making your income tax, residence tax, and pension payments. I will explain this condition more in detail. I think the most common thing one should consider with this condition are the traffic violations by those who drive. The violation history for the past five years will be looked at, and those earlier than that shall be irrelevant. If you have not been diligent in paying taxes, please pay off your outstanding dues completely before applying. For those who are married, please also make sure that your spouse's payments are not delinquent as well. 
In addition, contributing to the pension payment system is also required. Payment into the pension system is based on the rule that people living in Japan between the ages of 20 and 60 must pay regardless of their nationality. If you pay the national pension payments for the most recent year of your residence, your application should be okay. The fourth condition is that you must be able to make a living independently on your own. The livelihood requirement does not focus on how big or small your savings may be in your bank account. It is more important that you have a stable occupation and monthly income. You must either be a full-time contract or dispatch company employee with a minimum monthly salary of approximately 180,000 to 200,000 yen after tax. If you have dependents, the guideline amount will also increase as the number of dependents also increases. Lastly, there is no issue if you have any loans for as long as you have no delinquent payments. The fifth condition is that you must renounce your nationality from your home country once naturalized. If you're naturalized in Japan, you would need to renounce the nationality of your home country as Japan does not allow dual citizenship. It is therefore possible that you would need a visa to enter your home country and be treated as a foreigner. The sixth condition is about your ideology in protecting the constitution of Japan. Simply put, this means that you must not have any dangerous thoughts on bringing about harm to Japan or you must not be involved in an organization that plans to harm Japan. I am assuming that this is not a problem, right? Finally, the last condition, you must have a Japanese proficiency of a Japanese child of around 8 years old. Japanese being the national language of Japan, one is required to have at least the proficiency of a Japanese elementary school student and be able to read or write simple kanji in addition to hiragana and katakana. Basically, you should be able to have a smooth conversation in Japanese with an official from the Legal Affairs Bureau. It is possible that you would need to take a reading and writing test in Japanese, depending on the Legal Affairs Bureau official who is in charge of your application. If you have a Japanese Language Proficiency Test or JLPT N3 or N2 certification, you should be fine. When you have decided to continue with your application, the naturalization process has these three stages. So these are the main documents required when applying for nationality, but more may be asked depending on the situation. There are some documents that you have to get from Japanese government offices, some from your home country, and some that you have to create yourself. It takes time to prepare each document and Japanese translation is required. Also, please be careful as you will not pass the assessment if the documents are incomplete. After naturalization, if one spouse is granted permission for naturalization, that person's spouse will automatically become a foreigner who is married to a Japanese person. Acquiring Japanese nationality also has great benefits when a child is born. If the father or mother already have Japanese nationality, the child born can also acquire Japanese nationality. Especially if the mother has Japanese nationality, it does not matter if she is not legally married. Fetal recognition is required if only the father has Japanese nationality. Naturalization applications are time-consuming and labor-intensive, including multiple interviews from the Bureau of Legal Affairs in Japanese before an application is accepted. Also, applications will not be accepted unless all documents are complete. Application screening takes 6 to 12 months or more to complete in varying time frames, depending on how quickly you can gather all the necessary paperwork together. The good news is, while it may take a while to process your application, about 90% of all applications are approved. The Civil Affairs Bureau of the Ministry of Justice announces the applicants for naturalization permission and the number of people permitted. You are considered to be a citizen of Japan on the same day when the announcement about your newly granted Japanese citizenship appears in the official gazette or kampo of the Ministry of Justice. When you receive your Certificate of Naturalization from the Bureau of Legal Affairs, you need to complete a few more procedures, which are the following. The return of your residence card to the immigration office, 
reporting to your local municipal office within the specific time, and getting your own family registry. And lastly, changing your name on your official documents like your driver's license, bank account, and such in Japanese. And that's our video on everything you need to know about acquiring a Japanese citizenship. I hope I was able to help you decide whether to apply for Japanese naturalization or how to prepare for one in the near future. I think the main difference between the application for permanent residence and naturalization, other than the required minimum stay in Japan, is that with naturalization, there is a need to renounce the citizenship from your home country and be able to have an intermediate level of Japanese. The entire application can be a very tedious process. But getting a positive outcome should make all the effort and sacrifices worthwhile. I'd imagine it to be the culmination of your long journey in Japan. Thank you for watching until the end. I would love to hear any of your experiences in getting Japanese naturalization, like how long the entire process take and any advice you may have. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel as you find more ways to make foreigners living in Japan easier. Until our next video, bye-bye!